Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a deep dive into the HESI A2 anatomy and physiology section. So when I took the HESI A2 exam, I was able to pass with over a 90% score on the whole test. And I'm gonna be sharing with you all what I learned along the way and the study tips that I used to be able to get that score. So first of all, the good news is that in my opinion, the anatomy and physiology section on the HESI A2 exam is not as difficult as when you take your actual anatomy and physiology course. So most A&P courses are going to be a lot more detailed and a lot more involved than the questions that you're going to have on the HESI A2. Now, the thing is though, that on the HESI A2, the anatomy and physiology questions are gonna be on all of the different body systems at once, so it's not going to be just focused on one system or one section of the body, but all of it. So today I'm going to run over what are the main areas that you should know and study to prepare for the exam so that you can be as prepared as possible. So I hope that today this is helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments along the way, definitely go ahead and leave those comments down below. I check my comments often and I will do my best to get back to you. So I've got my handy notes with me right here. So you may see me looking down some and that's because I'm just making sure that I'm on track and remembering all of the different points that I wanted to share with you today. So as you get going on the anatomy and physiology section, here are the main systems that you want to focus on. I'll just say them all right off the bat and then we'll get into some more details of specifics that you'll want to study in preparation. First of all, on the anatomy and physiology section, there will be general terminology that you need to know. Histology, you'll want to know mitosis and meiosis. You'll want to know about the skin, the skeletal system, the muscular system, the nervous system, the endocrine system, the circulatory system, the respiratory system, the digestive system, the urinary system, and the reproductive system. So as you can see, it covers all of the systems of the body, as well as a few other general terminology and general anatomy topics. So first off, how many questions are there total on the anatomy and physiology exam? There are going to be 30 questions on the exam. And in terms of time limit, each school sets its own time limit for the anatomy and physiology section. So you'll want to check with the schools that you are applying to to see how much time they give you to take the A&P section as well as there are no official passing or failing scores on the ANP section, but that again is gonna be set by your school that you're applying to. So you'll also want to check with your school to make sure that you know what is considered a passing grade and what would be considered a failing grade. All right, so now let's get into some of the specifics that you're going to want to study in preparation for the ANP section. Now, I had a couple websites that I used and I also use an online study course as I was getting ready for the HESI exam. I do want to recommend those just because I think, especially if you are in a rush to prepare for the HESI exam and you need to be ready in just a few days or a week or even just a couple weeks, I highly recommend getting an online course that helps you to focus in your studies on what you need the most work on. So my recommendation would be to go with either the Mometrics online course, I used that as I prepared, and then also, Nurse Hub has a very good online course as well for the HESI exam. So I actually used both of those as I was getting ready for the HESI exam and they helped me immensely. They both have a lot of similarities and you can just take a look at both of them if you're interested and decide which one might be a better fit for you. But I highly recommend either of those as a study course. Now there also are a couple of free online resources like free practice tests online and I'll link those down below as well. And then also there's a couple websites that I used as I was preparing just to make sure that I was touching all of the general areas for studying. So Pocket Prep is one of those websites and then Union Test Prep is another one. Both of them have a very good um, blog post summary of what you should study for the anatomy and physiology section. And again, I would highly recommend just going through both of those websites, reading through, making sure that you are studying all of those different points as you're preparing for the test. So let's jump right into some of these specific topics of what you should be studying. First of all, in terms of general terminology, you want to make sure that you understand and know the body planes. So like the sagittal plane, the coronal plane, those are the different cross sections of the body and you'll wanna make sure that you understand those. Also with general terminology, you'll want to know about body orientation and terms of direction. So for example, what superior means and what inferior means, what anterior 
and posterior means. It's <laughs> like tongue twister for my tongue. So you'll want to know that terminology and not just know it, but you want to know how to apply that. So for example, on the exam, I had several questions like this where it would say, is the face superior or inferior to the neck? So then you would have to know, okay, what does superior and inferior mean and how do I apply that to this question? Now that would be kind of a very simple question. They ask a little bit more complicated questions like um, specific anatomy inside the body and if it's anterior to, posterior to, or inferior, superior, all of those, you just wanna make sure you understand all those terms and study up on those. Also in terms of general terminology and general anatomy facts, you'll want to study up on mitosis and meiosis and know all of the stages of both of those processes and then also understand and know the differences between the two of them. Now let's get into the different body systems and some of the specific things that you should study with those. So first of all, we'll talk about the skeletal system. So with the skeletal system, and actually this kind of goes for all of the body systems in general, the HESI exam tends to focus more on the anatomy side of things with their questions rather than on the physiology of it. So that means you'll want to focus more on memorizing where the different organs are and the different um, parts of the body. And there aren't as many questions that are focused on the function or the physiology of, of the anatomy, although you will need to know some things. Like for example, when it comes to the circulatory system, like how the heart functions, I had a lot of questions on the physiology of that as well as the anatomy of the heart. But it tends to focus more on the anatomy. And in my experience, if you're taking the T's test, when I took the T's, the T's focused a lot more on physiology, not as much on anatomy. The HESI tends to focus more on the anatomy rather than the physiology. So anyways, that's something that's good to know and a little helpful to know in terms of what you should spend the majority of your time studying. So for the skeletal system, you'll want to make sure that you know the types of cells that make up the bone tissue. You'll want to know how bone tissue is structured and you want to memorize all the major bones of the human body. Also, you want to know the different types of bones. So there's like the long bones, flat bones, short bones, sesamoid and irregular and know a few examples of those different bones in the human body. Also in the skeletal system, you'll want to know about the supportive tissues, so tendons, ligaments, and cartilage, and you'll want to know the difference between those. So when I took the HESI exam, there was a question about the difference between tendon and ligaments, so I just remember that question coming up. So that's important to know the differences between those connective, um, or the supportive tissues of the skeletal system. But let's move on now to the muscular system. So what should you study in the muscular system? First, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you understand the three layers of connective tissue. And again, focus a little bit more on the anatomy rather than the physiology as you study. So work on memorizing all of the major muscles throughout the body. Try to spend a little time to memorize where those are and some of those major muscles. You'll also want to know the three major muscle types that are in the body. So cardiac muscle, smooth muscle, and skeletal muscle. Know the differences between those and where you can find those different types of muscle tissue in the human body. Moving on now to the circulatory system. This is a really important system to really just study a lot and know through and through because you are almost for sure going to get a lot of questions about the circulatory system and you'll wanna make sure that you really understand this very well. So study the heart, study the structure of the heart and the layers of the heart, study the, the anatomy of the heart, the different chambers. What you also wanna make sure that you know is know each of the ventricles of the heart and know how the blood flows through, in what order it goes through, and then also how it exits the heart to the lungs and how it comes back in. So make sure you understand that. And also kind of as part of all of that, make sure you understand the difference between veins and arteries and what direction the blood flow goes through as it goes through the body. And then study a little bit up also on how the exchange of gases happens. All right, so moving on to the immune and lymphatic system. So here are a few details that you can make sure that you study to prepare for that. Make sure that you know the anatomy of the lymph node, and then you'll want to make sure that you understand and know all of the key terms that are associated with the immune system and the lymphatic system. So like T cells, B cells, um, the organs that are involved with 
this whole immune process, the thymus, different blood cells that are also associated with the immune process, basophil, neutrophil, eosinophil, and plasma and thrombocytes. So those are just some terms and you'll want to make sure that you study up and know what they are, know how they function in the human body and then any organs that are associated with the immune and lymphatic system, make sure that you understand those also. All right, so moving on to the endocrine system. So this is the hormone system of the body. You wanna make sure that you know all the hormones that are secreted by the body and which gland they are being secreted by. So you want to make sure you have that connection down very well and be very familiar with that. And then also you want to know what the purpose of the hormone is. What is its function? What does it do? All right, so I'm just gonna mention a few. Antidiuretic hormone or ADH, luteinizing hormone or LH, estrogen, testosterone, aldosterone, and then there's a few other hormones as well. But just make sure you know all of those different hormones, again, the gland that it's secreted by, and what its function and purpose is as well. So the major glands of the endocrine system, the pituitary gland, the pineal gland, the adrenal gland, the parathyroid gland, the hypothalamus. So just make sure that you know all of those glands and what they secrete and what the purpose of those secretions are. Now let's move on to the nervous system. Okay, so the nervous system is divided into two parts. There's the central nervous system, the CNS, and there's the peripheral nervous system, the PNS. Make sure that you know what both of those are and what their function is. You'll want to study up on the parts of the brain that are very key in the nervous system. So the cerebellum, the cere cerebrum, and the medulla oblongata, and then the cranial nerves. You're gonna want to make sure that you know those. So like the olfactory nerve, the optic nerve, and the vagus nerve. Make sure that you study up on all of the cranial nerves and what their function is. All right, so moving on to the reproductive system. So with the reproductive system, be sure that you have memorized all the stages of mitosis. So cell reproduction, you want to make sure you know that very, very well. I got questions about that, and I think it's very likely that you'll get questions about that. So make sure you really do understand that and know about all the phases and what happens in those phases. And then, you want to make sure that you know the key terms that are associated with reproduction. So fertilization, the anatomy of the male and female bodies, and then the hormones that are associated with that for both male and female. All right, so the urinary system is next. So the renal system, which removes waste from your body and it regulates blood, you'll wanna make sure that you know the anatomy. So the kidneys, the ureters, bladder, and urethra. And so you wanna understand how the kidneys function and create urine and then how it is expelled from the body. And then you also want to have a good understanding of blood filtration and the structure of the nephron. So this is another thing I had questions on on my exam. So you want to really study up on the nephron and understand the way that it's structured and then also how it's involved with um, creating urine and then also blood filtration. All right, so the respiratory system. So the respiratory system, which consists of the lungs, the trachea, the bronchi, the diaphragm, this allows our body to receive oxygen and then there's an exchange between the oxygen and carbon dioxide and the carbon dioxide is then expelled from the body. So you want to know all of the anatomy involved in that and then the process that that happens in the human body. Also study up on how inhalation works and how exhalation works having to do with the pressure um, in your lungs. You want to understand that. I had some questions also related to inhalation and exhalation on my exam. All right, so finally, the digestive system. The digestive system, which has to do with how our body breaks down food and absorbs nutrients into the body. You'll want to study largely the anatomy of the digestive system. So the mouth, esophagus, stomach, etc., as food moves through our body. And then you want to know about the enzymes that help to break down food in the body and where those enzymes, so which organ those enzymes are used to break down food. The pancreas, which also secretes enzymes, also produces insulin, so you'll want to study up on that, what is insulin and how it works in the human body. And then the gallbladder, which creates bile, so you'll want to study up on bile a little bit and how that helps to break down fats in the body. So that is it for the systems. There's one other thing that you may get some questions on and that is the body senses. So this has to do with your sight, your hearing, your taste. For this one, make sure that you study a lot on the anatomy of the nose, the ears, and the eye. 
I had a few very detailed questions um, specifically about the eye, the structure of the eye, and then the structure of the ear. And from different websites that I've looked at and then through my studies, I think that that's very common to have questions based on the specific anatomy of the eye, nose, and ear. So make sure that you study up on that and are very familiar with that as well. So that is a very quick rundown of some of the details and specifics that you can be studying to prepare for the anatomy and physiology section of the HESI exam. If you enjoyed it, you can give it a thumbs up down below and you can subscribe to this channel. Thank you guys for coming along for the ride.